Tonight's Barracks Talk is brought to you by Dr. Howard Waitskin, whom we interviewed a couple of months ago, and you can find his interview on podbean.com, DB Radio. Without further ado, here goes the show. Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DB Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DB Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Three, two, one. Zero. Strap yourself in. Because we're set up, switched on, and ready to go. Attention, everyone. You're tuned in live. <laughs> Radio. Online and on the go on your mobile device. Listener's discretion is advised. Five, four, three, two, one. Mm. Hey, and you're listening to DB Radio with the old guy. I see Bo, who never leaves his couch for some reason. Google and recall, and I don't know where Mark he's at. Right. I was going to say, he probably went to Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> the little garlic <laughs> sauce is delicious. You all right neo-Nazi bastards better stop it right now. If you use the cheap sauce, it don't taste good. <laughs> it tastes like ass. <laughs> and I've got an important message. Joe Junkie and Carrie Crack are perfectly fine for Tombstone. Well, yep. Carrie Crack is perfectly fine. She did in New Zealand. Oh, wow. I would have sex with Brad Pitt. How can you even read that with a straight face? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I've heard that many like short and tuna can girth, so I'm winning in that <laughs> round, apparently. <laughs> You're tuned in to WDVR on DVRadio.net or by searching DV Radio on your TuneIn app on your favorite mobile device. Because this is how it is on DV Radio. That is how it is right here on Barracks Talk Live. DVRadio.net, WDVR, I'm Boner with. Why is this episode brought to you by Dr. Howard Witzkin? Because he donated uh, just recently. You can do that if you go to DVRadio.net, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the blue Donate Now button. Any amount is welcome, one to a billion fucking dollars that your uncle left you <laughs> in his will. So go do that right now, DVRadio.net. How you guys doing? We got DV6. Marquee is not here right this second, but he is in Skype, and we've got Recoil. I'm assuming Google is going to be here sometime tonight. DV6. Hey, Bo. That was a pretty good intro. Oh, oh, six. I've got something for you when your time is up. You want to hear it? Yeah. <sighs> Do, yeah, go ahead. Do, do you want to hear it now, or do you want me to just do it? Can when I you're... get extra time if I listen to it? That's up to you. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the amount of time that it takes to listen to this. Okay. <laughs> that that means your time's up. <laughs> All I could think of was the monster's doorbell when I heard that horn. Anyway. How you doing, man? I'm great. Did you just see what happened at the DB farm? No, we were actually talking in the pre-show, and I had seen that DB went live, and I was like, when did DB go live? What What are they doing? Uh, did, did anybody tell you what we just did? I actually got a text message, but I'll let you explain it, because I have no, no clue what the context was. It's not funny if I explain it, but anyhow. No, uh, listen, so let me get it... It's been one hell of a week, uh, having Nevermore from Disgruntled, JJ from PTS Dog, Ron Ripley was here uh, for a few days, having all these people, Salty Soldier last week. Uh, it's been a busy, busy time here at uh, at the farm, the DV farm for Homeless Vets. Uh, a lot of people come out to show their support for the open house, and uh a lot of media coverage this past since the flags for the fallen forgotten soldiers went up. Uh, it's just been insane. But I am truly, truly thankful for everybody and every anybody and everybody who helped put this uh, pulled this off. And I'm beat. So we were just out blowing off a little steam. But uh, meeting all the dogs, I got to see my buddy Skeeter from PTS Dog, uh, the, his dog. That dog is awesome. I got him in a live video howling. Yeah. I just made a sheep outside howl in the live video. You, you got to watch that. Well, people are asking what's the medical status on the goat's asshole, so I'm assuming I that has something to do with I promise to give you an that. update. Right now, um, 
Mary the Little Lamb is en route to a trauma surgeon. It's, uh, it, the, the surgeon on call is Ron Jeremy. He's going to take care of it. Uh, so we'll touch base later. But the sound effects in that video, you got to listen to it. It's pretty good. Which bases are we touching with Ron Jeremy? I don't know. I don't know we're touching bases. He's just a surgeon on call. You said so. you were going to touch bases right after. Uh... Oh, don't sidetrack <laughs> me like that. Come on. Let's behave tonight. I just thought that was hilarious. Uh, I guess I'm so, uh, it. Ron Ripley got to take. What the fuck was that? All mm -hmm. right. So, Ron Ripley was here. And, um, we were doing, I was doing a live video in, in the morning, uh, before my morning meeting. And, uh, unfortunately, it ran a little late. So, I just left it. I left the office and Ron took over. And he was on for like an hour. Did pretty good. It's nice to see new meat in the gunner seat. You know, different face. I think right. it did. Yeah. Oh, is that recall? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I Depends heard you, on... I heard you're getting hate mail now, too. That's awesome. Welcome right. to the pub. <laughs> right. Moved up to the big world now. <laughs> so, so we, we, um, a lot of, okay, so there's a lot that happened. Um, Curtis Custom Creation sent us another, uh, wooden flag. To raffle off, but we didn't, and uh, you know we had that. Um, just just a lot going on. So now this week we got somebody coming from Ireland that's heard about this DV organization here in the states, you know, and uh, they want to do a story on it. And then um, Thursday, the brother, no, the son of Howard Berry's friend, the Vietnam vet that was part of this setting up this exhibit for the fallen soldiers or the 22 a day. He's a, uh, I may get this wrong, but he, his, what he does for a living is, uh, drone uses drones, uh, for whatever reason. And he's going to come down with his professional drone and do aerial shots and put together a montage or whatever on Thursday. So we look forward to having him, uh, to do that. And then he's going to put together, I guess, like a, uh, mon uh, a video thing on the memorial. And then maybe as a side project, put one on separately for the farm. Well, you know, we got that going on. Um, what else? Yep. Didn't get hurt. Uh, Andy, the farm manager put off, pulled off one hell of a show. It ended prematurely just a little bit. Um, uh, Andy was a, uh, engineer in the Marines, but not a mortar maggot. And unfortunately, he melted all the mortar tubes. So, uh, we still have a few shots left over because mortar tubes were unusable. Well, actually, they were blown all over the place. We'll get pictures <laughs> of that later. But yeah, it was, it was good. I think everybody had a good time. It was hot as fuck here. So, but, uh, there's that. Google, big help. Um, you know, we have family stopping by from time to time. Oh, I just, just all kinds. But in all seriousness, going back to the memorial, what we're talking about is Flags for Our Forgotten Soldiers. That's the name of it. And it's a creation by Howard Berry and Chris Cruz. Chris Cruz lost a brother right after he was a Vietnam vet and his brother was in the Marines, was a Vietnam uh, vet too. But he unfortunately took his own life shortly after returning from Vietnam. Howard Berry, his son, Staff Sergeant Berry, was at the port of a shooting a few years later. He took his life. So Howard has made it his mission, along with uh, Mr. Cruz to get somebody to listen that there needs to be more done. And, uh, these, these visual representations of a month's worth of suicides, uh, denoted by one for well, a flag for each represent one veteran of that month, 660 flags. When you put, you know, we have like 20, 30, 32 rows of flags, whatever the number is, 660 flags. It's almost the population of, of the town we live in, of a month's worth of suicides, veteran suicide and activity. Um, he makes good points. He says, you know, he says, if there were plane crashes, commercial airliners going down and 660 people were losing their life every single month, something would be done. There'd be an outcry. He's, he, you know, so... I agree with them. So we're the 26th eight to do it. If you're interested in doing it, shoot me an email. I'll put you in touch with them. All right. I did a lot today. Did the mail calls and all that. But first, I haven't heard from Bo all week. I actually was worried about him. And uh, 
From what I heard, he blew the shitter up at his house. Can you elaborate, please? Well, see, I had a Crohn's outburst, and then we started hearing things gurgling, thinking it was my stomach. Come to find out, it was all the drains. It was actually the septic tank backed up, and nobody is open today and answering calls to come and suck out the shit of the septic tank, so we've got to wait until Monday. <sighs> That's been my week. Fuck it, it is. Shit's getting deep in your house. Oh, and Bedlam, one of our moderators made it. DV Bedlam, sorry. Shout out to her. Whew. Shit's rising in your house. Mm-mm-mm. Well, yeah. I, I hope you guys get it fixed. Yeah. Well, we, we've been in this place for 17 years now, and we've never had to get it pumped, so I think we're doing pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Well, Considering. You know, when everybody's shitting outside and, you know, kind of helps keep it going on. Well, I have a bedside commode, so I don't have to worry about the toilet. Oh, man. Uh, so now, next update. Moving right along from that shit to dicks. Operation Send a Dick. Send, uh, what is that called again? I got to go to chat to read that. Oh, it's office chat. Office mailroom. DV office mailrooms. It is called. Oh. Uh, do, 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 do. The bag of what is the ETA on the Congressional Bag of Dicks project? As you know, somebody, either somebody in my office or you guys out there listening, started. there's a Kickstarter to raise enough money to send every member of Congress, both houses, a bag of dicks with the letter uh, asking, you know, like if we get their attention, you know, that more needs to be done. I need to go down the office and finalize the letter. Um, but... Everybody that donated, it's a success. Um, uh, DV Long Dong from the mail, uh, the, the main warehouse is. Uh, I'll be meeting with him Wednesday, but he does confirm that uh, everybody in Congress should will get them before they break for the summer recess. You know, so that's. I hear noise in the other room. Uh, oh well, I guess we have life here. So there's that. What else is going on? Um, Bo. Yes. Have you ever been arrested? Sadly, no. Sadly, that's what you call Mark E. I know. So I'm has anybody fine. out there been arrested? No, nah, I'm not going to go there. It's too early in the show. Never mind. Anyhow, so what else? That's it. Have a good night. <laughs> Oh my god! No stories. I'm beat. Sorry, I I just shot my load on that sheep out video. That doesn't even sound right. God. So what's this about a goat trying to fuck a chicken on a DV farm? That was yeah. They I'm doing a live video and the the farm the radio goes off from over at the vet house and all I hear is uh, I go. So I think it's cool when when like I'm doing a live video in the farm. You know, the farm's still running, you know. And so when the radio squawks, it's like, all right, hold on, everybody. I'll answer this transmission. Yeah, let's do, all right, this might go ahead. Over. Yeah, um, looks like one of the goats is trying to fuck a duck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. I do know that they had to redo the duck house. They have little doors for just the ducks to, you know, if you watch the live video, there's little tiny doors for just the ducks. And, uh, well, one of the goats has been, been, has figured out how to get through that little door and get into the duck house. And inside the duck house, of course, is the ducks, is the eggs and the grain. The grain he's not allowed to eat because he's, uh, he can't have grain. So he's been doing that. So, and what they witnessed when they got inside looked like, you know, some sexual activity. Well, so you have you have a, a gluten intolerant goat. That's how he came. Don't get, me, <laughs> don't get me started. I'm not. But, yeah. but I can't risk it. Uh, we'll have to try some almond flour for the goat. You can eat everything. Tin cans and it's 
was green, he could die. (laughs) (laughs) I remember years ago, they used to say, don't feed the dogs bread, it could kill them. What? 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 (laughs) The wildlife thing would come to certain schools and they'd be like, don't feed the ducks at the lake any bread, it could kill them. And I'm like, what else are you supposed to feed the assholes? <laughs> what the hell? I'm on the page. He made me wear the United States Space Force shirt, future dysfunctional veteran shirt, but we're pushing the door gunner shirt. How come I didn't get a door gunner shirt? Yeah, for, for every time I do a commercial, I get a free shirt from my whole company. <laughs> <laughs> I want that one. Double fucking barrel gun. Oh, man. In other news, Carl received a no-go and has been recycled for failure to complete the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. And, uh... What's her name? Uh, What do you guys think about Kathy Griffin doing a remake with uh, Cher on, um... What's the name of that movie? Um... Mask. If it's, Kathy, if it's Kathy Griffin, she could play the guy from Mask. That's what I was that's saying. Mask. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. Mask. <laughs> mask. Right? Wasn't that her that played the Elephant Boy? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's taking over the MeWe page, and it's nothing but. I mean, I appreciate titties and all that, but that's all it is, and dicks and stuff. Anyhow, you're complaining. Okay. Oh, there it is. Be honest, should Kathy Griffin do another movie with Cher and it's a picture of Elephant Boy and her? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so how's everybody doing, man? Hopefully I get some sleep tonight, so make it quick. <laughs> it was great meeting everybody. It really was. I wish you could have you gotten up here, uh, recoil. Uh, yeah, I actually ended up working through the entire fourth. Yeah, it's I, I not hear you and the same thing with Tin Man, Jaffo, Top, um everybody. But you know, I'm kinda glad you didn't because I felt bad enough. Um between Bedlam, Ron, J uh PTS Dog, uh never more from Disgruntled, even my own family, I did not have didn't didn't have really much time and it was just, if anything and anything could go wrong, we did two events on the same day. So I was up at four with the men. That's a new tradition. We go down to uh, Keene. And when, um, as much as you know how like people support us, there's a, it's called Pathways for Keene. And uh, this organization maintains and uh, raises money to keep the bike trails and all those rail, rail beds open for bikes and snowmobiles and all that. And it's our second year sponsoring them. And all we do, they run four miles. It's called Four on the Fourth. It's a four-mile run. People that run raise money for it. And then um, the people want to set up booths like we did. You know, you, you donate and you get a booth. And, and we pa- the guys pass out bananas and ice water to the runners. Uh, it's our second year doing it. So we had that and then the open house the same day. So it was a long day. And it was almost 100 degrees here in New Hampshire. After see, everybody left, the heat wave broke. See, broke you guys, flat. you all had it made. I, I had, had actually almost finished uh, yesterday's Not Another Military Spouse show Wednesday night, and I was going to finish it Thursday morning. So, between Wednesday night and Thursday fucking morning, Microsoft, Bill Gates, Windows, decided to make a fucking update. I go to open up the goddamn editing file, corrupt. I'm like, okay, I got to restart. Sometimes that happens. Go and open it back up after I restart everything. Nope. Thank you, Windows, for corrupting my fucking file. I had to spend another six fucking hours getting that shit finished. I was so fucking pissed. Yeah. Well, that's not as bad as Facebook just decided not to post anything this morning. Oh, my God. I so thought my Facebook was fucked up when I'd seen that. I was like, it's just me, you know, because nobody had said anything about it. And I was like, okay. And then you call me, and we're both like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then on the serious side of things, um, even with the, all the events, 
life still goes on. And um, my farm manager, he was here for the fourth, but wasn't here the day before. And there's all that extra stuff going. And then you get that one person that calls the farm instead of calling the crisis line or, you know, or somebody that needs help. And, you know, you can't just say, hey, sorry, uh, that's not my job, you know. You got to stop and, and, and do the right thing and, and try to point people in the right direction and all that. And you got that going on. And um, and then you've got people, because they've heard it in the media, stopping by to see the memorial. And then they, they want to come over and talk, which is fine. But I've seen too many parents. I've seen too many people leave here fucked up crying because they lost somebody. And, and uh, they come here. And it's like, you know, this is the first time it seems like anybody's cared. There's no... There's nowhere for us to go. As soon as our son died, we were disowned. You know, there's no whatever at the VA or the government. And then the hate they get. How do you get fucking hate when your son or daughter dies? But it happens. They get. That's a whole nother show. What do you. Fucking God. We have nothing planned for this show. We can be this show. That's all right. We're going to keep it upbeat. Because I'll tell you what, I'll even make a bad joke. I was thinking about, I was, I was all done the other day. I was thinking about posting to Facebook that I have information that'll lead to Hillary Clinton's arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Boom. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, wait. Back up. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, man. Nobody died over the weekend here. I mean, as far as, like, getting hurt by animals or anything, they were all cooled. The ducks were all mingling. Skeeter didn't eat anybody. The bird behaved somewhat, except for when Ron Ripley went live. Um, Yeah. I heard he done pretty good. I told Ron the story of how we met Marquis and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I told him about the job of him being a, a coyote and shit, you know. For people what? coming through. Well, like you're the you're the male version of Harriet Tubman for the Atlanta area. <laughs> oh, oh come on, that was a good one. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. No, because Chick Fil A's big down there, so he smuggles Church's chicken in there. You know. So he's, hey, 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 hey! Church's chicken is the best fried chicken no, not, in the world. It's not. Um. You know, I've honestly never had a church's chicken. Actually, I did one time. It was like Faith Baptist Church or something. There's Mr. Bojangles. There's there's churches. Um, there's uh, Popeyes. Popeyes. I miss Popeyes. And Law John Silvers. We don't have any of those. We only see those on the road. And it's basically fast food. I love Law John Silvers, man. Who you kidding? Who you kidding, I'll dog? Go. Bruh. Bruh. Come on, bro. Oh, I forgot to tell Saul. Hey, so listen. <laughs> so we get on the front page of the paper. Who who gets on the front page? The salty soldier, right? <laughs> so I'm laughing. I think it's great. They were here. His guys were here to help plant the flags. So I call them the next day, and I sent them a screenshot. I said, hey, you made the front page. And then my old man shows up from Texas. That He had shown up the day of the event or the day before, and he was here. And I'm telling my old man about it. I was like, look. My buddy got on the front page. He's like, yeah, me too. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, look, that's me in the background sipping coffee. And I look, and there he is just looking at everybody. You know how you have that pose where you just kind of just stand there, and you got your coffee on your chest, and you're just sipping it, and you just kind of look straight ahead at everybody, all serious. There he was in the background. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. So, um, shout out to Vivian Lee. A, job, a reporter from Channel 6 out of uh, Portland, Maine. She uh, came down here on Friday and met with uh, Howard Berry and Chris Cruz and, and did their thing and then came over to me and said, look, we want to get out of here. Um, you know, sorry we didn't talk to you. And I was like, no, no, it's it's about them and the memorial. You're good. You, she's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah. She's like, we want to get back to Maine so we can uh, edit this. We want to get it in tonight's newscast. And she did. She got back there and uh, they broadcast that night and they did a real good piece. If you guys want to see it, go to the DV Farm page and uh, check it out. She did a, a real tasteful story on it. I think. What's the name? Vivian Lee? Vivian yeah. Lee. 
L E I G H. Or lay. You know, depending on which way you go. Hey, six. You know what? I, I, I've thought about it a lot since I've met your dad. Have you ever realized that if he was like in what do they call the Civil War enactments, he'd be like the perfect Stonewall Jackson? Yeah, he does. I just watched the Rian, um, a documentary on that. Yeah, I could see Did that. You? Yeah, he, he does. He his beard, though. Oh, no, he had no. He had his beard again. I think well, he, hello, Vivian Lee. Whoa, easy there, fuck. Whoa, she's taken. Uh, I don't fuck this up for us, man. She's just she's done. <laughs> Sending the email right now. Facebook friend request, Twitter friend request. God, listen, Howard Berry, check this. Oh, I, yeah, I know this guy running for Congress ain't listening to this show, but I'm I'm black and she's white with blonde hair. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, oh God, he just went there. <laughs> Six isn't even going to touch it. <laughs> oh, because he'll get in trouble. If any, I make any jokes, I'm just going to. He doesn't realize it. Holy <laughs> shit. Excuse me. Brazzer. <laughs> Wait, just for Marquis, since he got six speechless. <laughs> six is like, I wouldn't touch that with a 10 inch pole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god that's great good news is uh, Google will be joining you guys here shortly for the news she's going to be taking over my workstation here in the office so I will be leaving yeah you tell her the next time she wants to change something in the show she needs to tell me an hour before fucking pre-show you tell her I don't get into that what do you think I'm married I mean, we are, but that, 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 no. <laughs> that doesn't go right there, uh, Six. I don't get in the middle of you two. Uh-uh. <laughs> so. I think it's funny. Me and you have our quarrels. Me and her have our quarrels. And then you two, holy shit. It's like the fucking apocalypse is coming when you two go at it. <laughs> is it me, or has social media been quiet lately? Like, we got a little bit of hate over the 4th, but... uh you know they were they were making memes with well, the LMA shirt I, with the sign, and I'm like, that's the best you got. I've got so a, Long I, Kong came out with the sign. I'm sorry, he, the lady that climbed the Statue of Liberty. He made a meme showing what she carried to the top of it, and it was an LMA shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta admit, Recoil did have a point with uh, why we didn't have the fireworks signs. I mean, that's probably why you you didn't get all the hate this year. You didn't make any. That's not even funny because we don't make them. It says on the <laughs> sign who friggin' makes them. <laughs> what is it like, United Veteran Pussies yeah. of America or something? Something yeah. retarded, yeah. Yeah, that that sign's gotten more. That organization's got more free advertising than we did with them. You know, hey, because <laughs> it's their their the name of their organization right on the friggin' sign, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please be courteous with your, your your fireworks as we blow up our fireworks here at DV. Right. <laughs> um, oh man. Anyhow, but um, yeah. What a week. What a week. I haven't watched any news. Haven't had any time. So, but uh, yeah. So I hear a rumor tells me that Chappie from Disgruntled Vets is going to. Uh, He's, he's, uh, I, I don't know if he's pulled the trigger on it yet or is, com is committed, but rumor has it he's going to be in charge of next year's event here. And if that's the case, then it'll be a real deal. Be a real deal. So, but uh, between now and then, I will be down at Bo's. Come visit us. He lives at where's his address? Yeah, there it is. Uh, <laughs> don't do him like that. Don't do him like that. It's we got to okay. come down and see you too. Um. It's okay, Marky. It's all right, Marky. You know, we were talking about uh, me and Recoil's got to get shotguns for when your daughter gets older. We're already loaded yep. here at my house. So if anybody comes in unwanted, shit, they ain't going to pass the bridge. <laughs> you got like 10 dogs outside. <laughs> they will eat your ass up unless and you're there's sick. Joe, there's Joe you know, and uh, Austin's nothing to be messed with. Oh, my God. Don't even start on him right now. I got a joke. Not really. A j read Skype when you get a chance, Six. When you can, read Skype chat. I don't know. 
of that. Hold well, on. we need to go to break, and you need to tell Google to get her news ready. So you going early? I have 10, right? It's 9.30. Okay, right, she'll be ready at 10. All right, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Bye. Wait, she'll be ready at 10, so we're not doing it when we get back from break. We're doing it. When? <laughs> I, whatever. I'll get her ready. Oh, my God. Anyway. Mute to mute. I'm muting. All right. Anyway, you are tuned into Barrett's Talk right here on TVRadio.net. WDBR. You got myself, Bonerwood, DB6, Marquee, Davis, Recall. Google is going to join us sometime after the first break. I don't even fucking know when now, but we'll be back right after this. TV Radio. You've been hearing from me about my book for the past two years on DV Radio. Now you can order a copy of PTS Dog, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, and The Service Dog. Check it out on BookLocker.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Amazon.com. If you choose to purchase the book on Amazon, please consider using Smile.Amazon.com and picking the DV Farm as your charity of choice. Buy your copy of PTS Dog, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, and The Service Dog today, only at BookLocker.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and Amazon.com. You know them as Triceratops and Dependipotamuses. Hey guys, this is Raven. Hi guys, I'm Shrew. The fuck is up? I'm out. <laughs> I want to swear. We're swearing? We're swearing. But they're known to the DV radio community as... Not Another Military Spouse. Airing every Friday, 1900, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on DVRadio.net. Missed out on the episode of your favorite show on DVRadio.net? That's where all my anger is right there. Head over to Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many other podcast streamers. Search DV Radio and catch up today. Bye. 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 You are listening to WDVR only on DDDDDVRadio.net. We're back to Barracks Talk right here on DVRadio.net. I'm Boner Wood. We got DB6 and Marquee. And uh, supposedly Google, or so, I don't know, but I don't fucking know what the fuck is going on tonight. Uh, supposedly, she's supposed to be here, we're supposed to be doing Chuck in the News, but then I was told she's not going to be here until 10 after 10 or after... That's after. when the news starts. And what's up with all the profanity? That's not what she said earlier. She wanted to do it earlier. She wanted to do it after the first break. Oh. Maybe that's what I... Okay, that's what you told me, so maybe I'm supposed to go out there and tell her now. I always oh. assume she'd come on until 10.30. Well, she wanted so to do I it... So I could go to bed now? Yeah, you can go on. to bed, and she can come in and do the news, and then we'll go about the show after... Yeah. Okay. That's... Hey, I don't know... Hey, you know as much as I do. I just sit here and press that's buttons. That's a good question, Michael Knippy. Will you guys be sharing any responses from all the senators who received said bag of dicks? <laughs> oh, man. Let me put that in office so he sees that. You're an asshole. will be right back. It's been a week. It's been a week, man. It's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I guess we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, Google has some things she needs to do tonight or, or some family over something. I'm not exactly sure. She wants to do junk that's in the news uh, out of schedule. So I guess when she comes and sits down at DB6's desk, we'll do the intro, then she'll do her news, and then we'll go do what the fuck ever. Um, Marquis. Yes, Bo. What you doing, man? Oh, well, right now I'm just reading this pamphlet I was handed today while I was downtown Atlanta uh, by some uh, left-leaning liberals. <laughs> well, don't don't give too much away. I'm not, not going to give too much away. I want to read this pamphlet to you guys later on in the show, though, because it is very true and so accurate and so well put together and cohesive in thought about Trump and Pence regimes being fascist. And it's just so great. It really opened my eyes to the fascism that's taking place right now in America. 
I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking that Google's was Google's here. I was, yeah, here. we heard Google. Yes, we, we heard Google. Google. Um, found out what the confusion was. You, uh, quote unquote, you guys never fucking responded. So I'm like, look, I'm not getting hey, in between you. Two hey, it was eight oh two. During Tell, free I, show. Hold on, hold on. I'm anyway, guys. This is DV6 signing off. Um, we're just gonna wait till we get a few people in here. And okay, hold on, hold on. What is going on tonight? I don't fucking know. I just wanted to do something <laughs> so nobody would start saying, "Dead there, dead there." We can't hear nothing. Dead there. Yeah, I know you can't hear nothing. Nobody's <laughs> fucking talking. <laughs> oh, you What's know what? What's wrong I, with my computer here? Right. <laughs> well. We'll, we'll do this until uh, Google lets us know she's there. Just keep playing it. No, fucking... All right, so without Six. further ado, this is Google's Chuck that's in the news. You big dummy. When a president lies... It's not called a lot. It's called a executive privilege. I'm Fred G. Sanford, and the G is for Guadalcanal. Uh, Wanna see my diary? <laughs> well, you a veteran? That's right. Oh, did you see much action? Well, only on me. <laughs> And now, it's time to find out what stupid junk is in the news. I love you, Bobby. (laughs) I told Six to stop talking. He's standing right fucking behind me, and he's like, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So, me and Marquis were trying, I think Marquis was trying to help me explain, but I was trying to explain to Six what you had said, and I was like, go let her know to get ready. And he was like, no, it's 10.30. I was like, is that what she told you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Okay, I guess it changed then, because, you know, that's how six works. But yeah, six is the one that fucked it up this time, because we told him but way before break. <laughs> and he said they want to do it right now after the first break, because, and the first break is over. <laughs> and I'm like, I fucking, I was like, they never responded to me, so how was I fucking supposed to know that that's what was going to happen? We had totally told him, you know, let's do it. You know, I was like, go let her know since she said that she wanted to do it after the first break to go ahead and get ready and come sit down during the break. So, you know, he didn't understand any of that, obviously. (laughs) No, all I remember is he came out of his office and went to the bathroom and then went back into the office. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he never said anything to me and then i he heard something yelling like, and i'm like motherfucker i gotta i gotta pause this actually marquis <laughs> right marquis right he did say before we went to break that he was going to go get you so you could come do the news after the break <laughs> marquis right. i remember that now yes you're right marquis <laughs> hey i got an idea let's let's give six a golf clap <laughs> Okay, I'll let you do your news. <laughs> too funny, too funny. All right, all right. So let's get get started here. Um, we'll go with the internet pastor first. He, uh, <laughs> internet pastor said, don't masturbate because it's gay sex. Yep, a notorious internet pastor, but he's not even a real fucking pastor, I guess, has warned men not to masturbate because it's it's sex with a man, and that's gay. He's also a high school football coach. Coach Dave, who has a surreal online following, made the comments on his Pass the Salt live stream. Um, I'm still, I don't know, I'm still kind of confused on this one. So I guess all men and women are gay, whether they have sex with a man or a woman. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So he said, um, you just got to say no to it as hard it, as hard as it is. 
<laughs> You're very honest about it. Masturbation is homosexuality. You're having sex with a man. You're putting images of a woman in your mind, but you're having sex with a man. It's, it's where the devil will take us if we give him free <laughs> reign in our mind. And then he continued on saying, our public schools are rife with se- with sexual deviancy. Public schools... So- Public schools are cesspools of sin and degenerate behavior, if not from the teacher, from the students themselves to each other. I'm like, man, oh, man. (laughs) But as hard as it is, you've just got to say no to masturbation. I got to ask. Go ahead, Marky. He obviously doesn't understand the actual health benefits of masturbation. And he probably doesn't know that babies in the womb masturbate. Like it's something that is inherent in everyone in the whole entire world. Well, I'm wondering if he is a descendant of Will Keith Kellogg, you know, the guy that uh, came up with Kellogg's to stop boys from masturbating. <laughs> Kellogg's cornflakes, that is. Yep. That's the only reason you you have a man create cereal for masturbation to stop masturbation. You have that man to thank for your cinnamon. Toast Crunch and Lucky Charms and Captain Crunch and Choco Puffs. And <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> if it wasn't for the devil, we wouldn't have the cereal. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and then let's okay. think about what sexual intercourse is. It's actually no. when the when the penis enters either, you know... The vaginal, the vaginal or anal area. Or the anus. The hands are not considered <laughs> sexual tools. If such, then handshakes would be considered <laughs> sex. Oh, damn, we had a lot of sex then. <laughs> I've had a lot of sex with myself if, if just hands are are, oh, are, are instruments of sex. That's Holy crazy. shit. That's stupid. Oh, man. <laughs> this is today's um, generation. So, so this one, this article is uh, from England where our wonderful president should be um, going to visit shortly. Um, but Sheffield's mayor, Magid Magid, bans Donald Trump from the city. Um, yes, the the name really is Magid Magid. Made the wait, announcement wait, while wait, sharing a. Wait, all I heard when you said his name was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, he made the announcement while chairing a Sheffield City Council meeting and donning a sombrero in solidarity with Mexico. Um, I'm like, great, great, that's fantastic. Of course, this man isn't even the actual mayor. He's like the 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 pretend mayor of this this city. What is a pretend mayor of a city? Are those real? Well, he hasn't been elected as the mayor. He's like filling in for for the current for the current mayor. Oh my god! Isn't it great? Isn't it great? Well, I agree with him because according to this pamphlet that I have in my hand, <laughs> Trump and his, uh, Pence regime must go because they are fascists, and we <laughs> refuse to accept a fascist America. Oh man! Oh. And I agree with him because now I am a uh, what a, a left leaning liberal to the far left. <laughs> someone handed me a pamphlet at the Martin Luther King Center today. Man, oh man. Um, yeah, he's the ceremon- ceremonial mayor. That's that's what it's called. Um, well, Magid, Magid, the, the, so the ceremonial mayor um, tweeted, Mr. Trump was a waste man and henceforth banned from the great city of Sheffield. Yeah. Oh, like great. Does Sheffield, does Sheffield have any uh, exports? Because I've never heard of that city. <laughs> it's, are the Beatles from Sheffield? It's like that city that Al Gore supposedly founded because of the whole renewable resource thing. I'm like, I've never even heard of this city, and it matters why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But the the exact tweet. Was I Magid Magid, Lord Mayor and first citizen of this city, hereby declare that not only is Donald J. Trump a waste man, but he also he is, but he is also henceforth banned from the great city of Sheffield. And then he said, "I further declare July thirteenth to be Mexico Solidarity Day." 
<laughs> I'm like, that's what upsets it. me about England, though. They all have these fanciful titles. I'm the Lord of <laughs> of West Side. Like, who hey, the fuck? Hey, Marky, if I ever get knighted, I I will fucking make you call me Sir Bonerwood. You won't get knighted oh, because man. you're not British and you haven't given enough money to the Queen. Actually, actually, non Britons <laughs> have been knighted. Just so you know. <laughs> Did you do it? Did you do an internet uh, survey and got knighted through that? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I no, no. I put twenty five dollars right now and become a bishop <laughs> in the Catholic Church. So don't mess with me. Sean Connery is not British, and he was knighted. Just so yes, you know. he's Scottish, and so he falls under the umbrella of the British Empire. Oh my God, that's not what you said to begin with. <laughs> you don't fall under the umbrella. You're in North Carolina. You don't fall under no British queen or king. Actually, 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 my ancestors all hail from Scotland, so go suck a dick. <laughs> well, you, you sound nothing like a Scottish person. You sound more like a Labradoodle. Well, you know what? You sound you sound like an Atlanta man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Google, you can continue. We'll stop insulting each other. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Um, let's do this one next. Hold on. Um, this is from Take a Wild Gas, Marky. Florida. What, what nice, nice city in San Fran in? Ah, in she fucked it up. Ah. San, <laughs> the San Bernardino. <laughs> San Francisco. Sorry. <laughs> They're the same thing. The same thing. San Francisco, San Bernardino, the same place. <laughs> I know, right? So, well, how dirty is San Francisco? An NBC Bay Area investigation reveals a dangerous mix of drug needles, garbage, and feces throughout downtown San Francisco. The investigative unit surveyed 153 blocks of the city. The more than 20-mile stretch includes popular tourist spots. Um, I'm guessing they're not so popular these days. Uh, like Union Square and major hotel change. And yes, they have tons and tons of dirty needles and waste and feces because of all the homeless. And they don't want to do anything about them. Oh, shit. I'm going to interrupt the news for breaking news. Equalizer 2 is out or coming out. With Denzel Washington, you all can go fuck yourself with all this stupid junk that's in the new. I want to see the Equalizer 2 right now. Sorry. I got, I, I was what? happy. <laughs> Bo, just because all the men in your family wear dresses doesn't mean you're Scottish, all right? What? Oh, what does that man. have to do with the Equalizer 2? <laughs> uh, so this, so this guy from San Francisco, is that what you said? Cause I got fucked yes. up with that one. <laughs> San Francisco. So the 2016-27 budget for San Francisco Public Works includes $60 million for street environmental services. So basically picking up needles and human feces (laughs) and disinfecting the sidewalks and shit like that. That costs $60 million for one city. For one year, yes. Well, that's because they, they failed to do anything about the homeless population. No, I don't see that it costs sixty million. Well, I also don't see why we're spending two million dollars to put overhead fucking power lines under the ground instead of building a two hundred thousand dollar room for fifteen fucking homeless people in my town. Anyway, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I've got all anyway. <laughs> well, the ma- the man in charge says that a single pile of human waste takes at least 30 minutes for one of his staffers to clean, saying the steamer has to come, he has to park the steamer, he's got to come out with his steamer, disinfect, steam clean, roll up, and go. That's all Same thing what? If they're pooping on the grass, you just scoop (laughs) it up to the dog. (laughs) Jesus. The only way that I could see that that was possible is if it's inside a hotel lobby. Yes. Even on the concrete, you get the bag, you put it over your hand. You pick yeah. it up, you turn the bag inside out, you tie it up, throw it away. Yeah. I know, right? The only reason you would want to disinfect anything is in a fucking lobby inside of a fucking building. <laughs> fucking. And then even so, just just get a spray of bleach and just spray, oh, spray, spray. Hey, you guys, it down. you guys remember that shit they would pour on puke when you were in school? 
It smelled oh, god awful. Yeah, yeah. Just pour that over the fucking stain where the people shit. Just do it. God. Or how about this? How about convert some of those abandoned buildings in downtown Los Angeles <gasps> to homeless shelters and oh get them off god. the streets? Marquee. And help them write a resume. Marquee, calm down. That's common sense. We can't have that. I know, right? We can't do something that, that obvious. Jesus. I'm so sick and tired of the bureaucratic BS when it comes to helping the homeless citizens of this country. Somebody, yes, I understand wait. that Rome had homeless citizens, uh, but it did something about it. Marquis, you know? I, I, I got to pause you for a minute. Someone email me right now and put podcast title, California Bands Common Sense, please, because that's what this is going to be called. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Holy <laughs> shit. You funny. And Marquis actually right. Rome did have a ton of homeless people, but they done something about it. Learn from the yep. fucking past, you retard. They either put them in, they either put them in the military or put them to work. Yep. And that's what you should yep. do. If you see them, have the police escort them to a place to get a job. Yep. Yep. All right. Um let's go over to Thailand real quick. I'm still trying to figure out what the hell these 12 boys and their soccer coach were doing in a cave. But hey, who am I to say anything about that? Um, <laughs> the the uh, the sad news is that last night, a former Thai Navy SEAL passed out underwater on an overnight mission and was unable to be revived. So what they're not telling you about these cave systems that's in Thailand, I'm sorry, Google, but what they're not telling you about a lot of these cave systems during the rainy season when they fill up, there's a lot of gases that humans just don't – we we can't ingest even underwater. And when I say that, I mean our skin. And a lot of times that happens to people that are in these cave systems, even scuba divers experienced as fuck. They'll pass out from these gases leaking into their pores and there's nothing that anybody can do about it unless they've got a partner or somebody else or whatever and gets them out. I mean, if you pass out in one of these cave systems, it's pretty much done and over with. I mean, it's black as fuck. Right. So yeah. that's probably, yeah, I'm I guessing that. that's what happened. But why Wait, would you go into the, the cave? cave system during during the rainy season? Well, why would you go into the cave system, period? There's nothing down to have for There's no gold. There's no silver. There's no diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking cave, people. It's water and, and stactolites. <laughs> stactolites. Just leave it alone. Oh, Stop I asked, looking at shit that we don't even uh, look at. I asked the same thing Google did. You've got a soccer coach that knew it was the raining season and took them anyway. Right. I mean, and it took it took them 10, 10 days to yeah. figure out where these kids w were. Yeah, that that's what really bothered me, too. The fact that nobody fucking knew where they were. If you're going with somebody away from my home, I better fucking know where your ass is every 10 minutes if you're my child. I don't give a oh, fuck yeah. if you're 10 or you're fucking 18. If you ain't graduated and got your own fucking job and paying your own goddamn bills and living under my roof, I want to know where your ass is. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, first of all, my children come home and say, Dad, our soccer is going to take it to a system of K's. No, motherfucker, we don't go in caves. We black. What is wrong with you? You black. You black. What's wrong with you? He said. Oh my god, that just happened. That just fucking oh, happened. Man. Oh my god. You black. What the fuck's wrong with you? That's crazy. But now, now, obviously, someone has died because these fucking idiots wanted to go into the cave. Yeah, yes, just... that's that's actually the sad part. That's, and that's the I thing that I don't. Where is the accountability on the not only the adult who was there, but the parents and things of that yep. nature? Like, I I can't stand it. What yeah. what what I don't understand is these Thai people are so happy when they're seeing these videos and they're laughing and joking. And I'm like, man, I would be fucking screwing my ass off. Let me in that fucking cave. I'm getting my goddamn youngin. I mean, yeah, right. Like, I would be fucking livid right now. I would not be smiling and laughing and joking. I'd be fucking killing a motherfucker to get my youngin out of that goddamn cave system. Yep. I've yet to see one parent crying yet. I'm not joking. I've not seen that anywhere Yeah, I yet. haven't seen that happening either. 
I mean, that's I mean, odd. If to you don't me. give a shit about your kid, then then just tell then you know, like just tell them call off the search. <laughs> don't right? bother getting them out until the rainy season's over. We'll see you in four months. And you know, if well, assume, remember though, it is a different culture. So, but but Marquis, for, I was I was getting ready to say, even though it's a different culture, when a tsunami hits or an earthquake hits, they're all crying, "My child's trapped." Blah 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 blah. Okay, they're in a fucking cave in cold, wet, <laughs> dark <laughs> environment where they could die at any fucking moment. Oh, man. Well, what what oh, is the God. significance of this cave? Is this cave like a a Hindu or a uh, Buddhist like shrine? Is it's there some significance fun. with a Hindu or Buddhist god in this uh, cave? Because it's a look of fun, Maki. Explain why they might be. It's a look of fun, Maki. It's a look of fun, and we want to go in. We want to fun. That's all we Don't want. Don't do that. <laughs> Next story, Google. You, you know what? No, Marquis, you know what? No one has been able to answer that question. Yeah. Mm. So, That's so why I, I can't even that. answer the question you're asking because I've been wondering the same fucking thing. I've actually been following this really fucking hard all week, and I've not seen any reasoning behind it, anybody crying, other than the people that are outside of the fucking country or anything. Like, nobody's acting worried. They're making fucking a way to put internet in there so the kids can Facebook and FaceTime their parents. What the fuck? Let's worry about then smartphones. They can, then, they can, then they can stay down there for four months. Yeah. Let's, let's wait until <laughs> September. God. Damn. <laughs> all right, all right. Final story for the night, and this one's kind of funny. Um, oh, I'll laugh. Woman, for- woman forced X to have sex holding machete to his face. And you all say men can't be raped. I know, right? A Montana woman broke into a man's house with a machete, ordered him to take off his clothes, and forced him to have sex with her, police said. Samantha Ray Mears, 19, was charged Friday with two felonies, aggravated bur- burglary and assault with a weapon, as well as several misdemeanors for the incident at her ex-boyfriend's Great Falls home. Mears reportedly broke into her ex of seven years house Friday. While he was away, when he returned, she confronted him with a large knife, demanded that he take up all his clothes and ordered him to lie on his bed. So there you go. Uh, the ex-boyfriend was able to alert authorities after claiming he needed to call a friend, then escaping from the room to dial 911. You know what? I was reading about this story and I saw a comment that said, how did he get an erection? What people fail to realize is that the male... Uh, uh, genitals do not need to be like, I don't need to be physically aroused by like what I see. It's, you just blow on it. It's going to get erect. That's how she was able to have sex with him with a knife in her hand because oh. the male body just does not care. But the male mind might care, but the body doesn't. <laughs> oh man. So after she finished, um, raping him. She sat naked on the bed, brandishing the weapon. At that point, the victim was able to take several photos of her, which he turned over to the police as evidence. When an argument ensued soon after, an enraged mares ripped a piece of trim from the victim's wall and deliberately urinated in his bed. Now, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> What gave it? What gave it away? The machete well, at, or the pee at, on the bed? <laughs> at first, I just thought she was extremely horny, and then <laughs> when she delivered the pee on the bed, she went the bat shit crazy. So <laughs> I'm done with her. Not defending you anymore, woman. Let's go next door. Let's move on. Oh man. <laughs> well, she did she bring a. I, I, what what I've got to say? She brought a knife to a gunfight and won. So. <laughs> You know, it's, a, it's actually a really good episode of Law & Order SVU where three <laughs> females rape the male stripper, and the whole scene, the whole show was about, yep. well, how did he get an erection? It was really good. I'm yeah. To, yeah uh, I, I remember that episode. Yeah, people don't understand when you're under pressure, you'll perform. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. I can't believe I just said that. Under pressure. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Well, you also said something about something being hard. I mean... You know, we are, we did already cover the very first started article. What? Sex. You know what? I kind of hope she gets pregnant. <laughs> She's only 19, too. I, I was thinking this chick was like 70, 80 years old and just wanted to have some fun kid. And I was like, nope. 
I was wrong. I was getting ready to say, you go, Grandma. And then I read the article that Google had sent me. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and she legit looks like a crazy ass bitch does she not google oh yeah oh my god the <laughs> She's, fucking hey, book she says it all. her boyfriend had to be having sex with her cry hold on seven she's 19 <laughs> hold on, let's do right. some math here and she's so been with that guy so she's been seven, with him since she was 12 yeah yep all right this has been junk in the news people <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I got it. I got to on this one. Yeah, that that was All a right. great one. That was a great one. So, have they had sex before? Obviously. There's so many questions here. They must have. <laughs> Otherwise, you want to know what it feels like with him. Yes. So he should be honored that she forced him to have sex with her. Maybe he realized she was one crazy ass nutcase and I didn't know, want right? to have That's sex why he broke with her. Oh, <laughs> well, let's be real here, okay? Every single man in America has had sex with one crazy chick or another, and <laughs> you go back to have sex with her because you just need to have sex at that point in time. Actually, like, screw it, I'll deal with it for these two weeks. Yeah. Actually, I I called it off before that even happened. So <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I've, I've not gotten that far with it. Well, I guess my ex wife counts as a crazy ass bitch. Anyway. Uh, Google. See? Yep, that's it. That's all I got. Well, Google, just for that. <laughs> just turn it up. All the time. All the time. Oh, man. Too funny. All right. I'm out, guys. All right. Have a nice evening. Bye Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. That was great. I. Uh, um. Uh, Google. I was getting ready to call you Google, Marky. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Because I was getting ready to say, was... do you do you want to do your pamphlet uh, before we go to break? Because we've got approximately, give or take, uh, 10, 12, 13 minutes or so. 13 minutes. Okay, yeah, this pamphlet is, uh, wow, people. Wow. So I'm going to give you a little background story real quick. I was downtown this morning uh, with my pastor. Yes, I am a Christian. I know, I know, whatever. But uh, we were going and talking to some veterans and homeless people and stuff like that. We was doing all that kind of stuff. And so uh, as we were leaving, it was, a, I guess, a protest that had formed right outside of the Martin Luther King Center. And uh, they were handing out these uh, pamphlets. And uh, a young lady, African-American lady, was talking about the Trump and Pence uh, administration. Well, everything she was saying was really incoherent and not, you know, put together well she was in a lot of ums and uh and just saying random stuff that made no sense it was, so i asked to get a pamphlet from her. so it's basically ahead, in in un in ele in unintelligible is that what it, they yes. use on the captions okay <laughs> yep and so i asked for a pamphlet because i just wanted to see if i was a fascist you know so uh, <laughs> i love i love how marquis goes up and he's like let me get one of them pamphlets i'm curious i might be a fascist <laughs> Yes, I did. I said, I said, I said, I think I'm a fascist. Can I get one of those families, please? <laughs> and so, uh, I'm reading it and I'm reading the, the bold print from it in the car on the ride back home with my pastor. He's like, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. And I'm like, I know it seems as though they just got a lot of things they said at, you know, maybe a rally or something like that together or a group meeting or wherever, uh, these, uh, people meet at. And uh, I'm just going to read one for you right now. Okay, <clears throat> This nightmare must end. The Trump-Pence regime must go. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. Now, you would expect, okay, I'm saying you would expect for after reading that headline, for them to explain to you what Trump and Pence are doing to be fascist. Well, let's read on. I'm going to make this quick. We are horrified and angered at the shocking damage already done to the lives here and around the world by the Trump-Pence regime. We recognize that they are poised to do far worse, including threatening war, even nuclear war. Through an unrelenting barrage of daily outrages and Twitter outbursts, the Trump-Pence regime is, a radically, is radically remaking society. Step by step, they are hammering into place a vicious American fascism. This is not Insult or exaggeration, it is what they are doing. They have not told me anything of what they are doing, 
They haven't given me any proof to back up any of their claims. The only thing they have done is just said radical rhetoric to make you try to side with them. Nothing they said was true. Nothing they said was actually of any fact. It was just rhetoric being thrown around on a piece of paper that they were just handing out left and right. And so this is what I'm getting at, people. Why? When? When? I want to say when. When do we become a country where we can just throw around things such as fascism, Nazi, communists, like it's just a, a, a everyday occurrence? Remember back in the 50s and the 60s when fascism, communism, Nazism was something that we were deeply afraid of, especially in the 50s, you know? Right after World War uh, II, we were so afraid of Nazis and communists taking over the world. We had a whole entire war where nobody shot a bullet in the Cold War about it until, what, the 90s, really? Yeah. I, I, right now, I really wish that I'm not. I'm not going to say it. Not going to say it, Bo. Not going to say it. <laughs> yeah, I've I've read this thing over and over, trying to make sense of it, and it's just like I know. Let's just tell them some bullshit. They'll believe it because people are gullible and not give them any facts whatsoever. And I think you were telling me earlier, she was doing the "my opinions are facts" sort of thing. Yep. Yep. And. That it's it's like going on Facebook, I mean, or or any social media, or any website, or a blog, or some interviewer, or some news guy on Twitter. They're all opinions, but we label label them as fact because ever since 2016, 15, 16, that's what we've grown to believe in as someone's fucking opinion. I, hey, I, you know, one thing though, before we go to break, before we go to break, they did have one good point in here. One good point that is on the inside of the uh, pamphlet, it says the Democrat, the Democratic Party leadership will not lead us out of this. They are about maintaining order for their whole setup. For them, order is more important than justice, even if that means the order of fascism. That's stupid, though. After Trump's election, President Obama said of Trump, we are all on the same team. We are now all rooting for his success. No! If Trump succeeds, it will be catastrophic. So the only thing they have here is that the Democratic Party don't care, and the Liberal Party don't, I mean, and the Republican Party really don't care. They just want to maintain their status quo. That that makes some sense, but the rest of it is pure garbage. Yeah, it's it's like so, like a couple of dumbasses got together and was like, what's the dumbest thing we can come up with to make people believe it, and then yep. go make them believe it? That's basically what they did. I mean, you and I could sit here, draft up something, make it look legit, tell the DVs, it was from this news article, and they'll believe it. I'm not calling our DVs or anybody that follows us ignorant or dumb or anything, but without people taking the initiative and time to go look up this shit, they want to follow anybody. They, they're a sheep. I mean, honestly, yep. I hate to be that way, but you're a sheep. I mean, you can, you, uh, you can go donate to them at refusefascism.org. So, uh -huh. I mean, you and I, we do a lot of research on a lot of dumb things, and people call us retarded for it. But when you get down to it, the thing that was retarded was what we started researching in the first fucking place. <laughs> yep. That's why we yep. fucking researched it, to see how retarded it can be. And it's not retarded what we researched. It was the subject or the topic we researched that was stupid and fucking yep. retarded. <laughs> but oh what's funny God. is that a lot of these people that are going around screaming this stuff have no idea what a fascist is. Yeah. Have no idea what a what a communist really is. Have no idea what a what a what a Nazi really is. They're just saying stuff because it it triggers the ear. You yeah. know, everyone in America know that communism is bad because we fought against it for so long. So if I say that person's a communist, so now all of a sudden they believe that person is evil. That person doesn't represent what we agree with here in America. But they just threw a word and don't even know what it means. They have no idea the background history of the word communist or the ideology of the government system known as communism. I'm yeah. done. I'm done, Bo. <laughs> I wish I had a mic drop on this thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, the the things that people will believe now, it's it blows my fucking mind. And like I said, I wasn't calling you guys ignorant or dumb or anything like that. It's just when you want to read a headline and not go read what's in the article and then do five minutes of research. That really hurts your credibility when you're trying to disprove a fucking title 
or five words that you've seen in a news article that popped up in your news feed. Like, <laughs> oh I'll tell God. you, I read this pamphlet about three to four times. I did. I really was trying to find something in it that was that had some substance, that had some intelligible uh, thoughts, that had some coherent yeah. uh, thoughts, you know, but it had nothing. Yeah, nothing. I've I've done the same with that first page that you sent us, and I just none of it really makes sense, minus that one little part. But that could be misconstrued as well. So I'm like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Like when you sent that to us, I was just like. This has got to be a joke. He found this somewhere. Nope. nope. <laughs> it was fucking dude, Atlanta. I kid you not. I kid you not, dude. They had a, they had a uh, a little banner up. They had two guys with it holding the banner. The girl had the megaphone in front of the in front of the King Center. Okay, so if you've never been to the Martin Luther King Center here in Atlanta, Georgia, it's actually called uh, the like the Civil Union Center or something like that, where yeah. it's just talking about harmony amongst men. Harmony together, you know, and you're and when, outside of the King Center. Just preaching. so everybody, just so everybody knows, when Marquis says men, he means mankind, all human beings. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, what I don't understand that either. Let me, I don't either. How can you get upset when I say, <laughs> "Hey, men, come here real quick"? I mean, all of you guys. Oh, I mean, all of you people, because I can't call you God because of the woman over there. But you know what I mean? It's like. What, what, when did we become a? When did we become a society of powder puffs? When did we become a society of everything hurts my feelings? We were once the greatest nation on this planet. If you were American and you went somewhere overseas, guess what happened? People were like, "Oh my God, a strong American! They built the foundation of the world." You know what I'm saying? Yep, one hundred percent. I get it. I get, you got to use my pronoun, Marte. <laughs> oh man! Use pronouns um, when you talk to me, okay? Use my correct pronoun. <laughs> I would curse somebody out if they ever said they would. They would fear me I, I that would, day if they ever told me to. I would slap the said. fuck. I'd slap what left, what is left of their brain right through their fucking ear. I, I, I was, man, I, was, I would tell them, grab your crotch. What is there? Do you have a I, penis? No. So I you think. are a girl. All right. Do you have a penis? Yes. So you are a boy. The only time I think that you shouldn't really jump to a conclusion is during pregnancy. Honestly, because it, <laughs> I, no, I'm not joking. And you know that you you know that because a, a just an ultrasound doesn't prove anything. I've seen it. I have seen it happen. And people think I'm, you know, joking about it. And it, it, you laugh. I get it. I've laughed at myself too for it, but it's true. That's the only time I don't think we should jump to a conclusion about it's a boy or a girl. Yeah, I call a girl dog he a lot of fucking times. Does that make me a god awful person? Apparently so. But I mean, come the fuck. Oh man, it's like uh, I don't even know anymore. I'm telling you, man. What's going to end up happening is ET is going to come here to to the to the <laughs> world, and they're going to be like. But well, what's your gender? He's gonna be like, oh, well, I have no gender. Oh, that's impossible. You can have a gender. Are you a man? Are you are he? Are you a she? Are you a it? Oh my goodness. This is the this is the reason why we don't have intelligent life form here on Earth. This is the reason why yep. aliens don't come to visit us from uh, the Andromeda region. Yeah. This is the reason why. <laughs> See, I was looking so forward. I was so looking forward to Stargate happening in my time. Nope. Thanks, motherfuckers. <laughs> Not gonna happen, buddy. Not gonna happen. <laughs> I was hoping Marquis would be my wharf, alright? So what? Hey, I don't, it's just, you know what? Star Trek is BS because of that. A whole race of black folks, and they gotta have scrunched up foreheads and receding their hairlines? <laughs> BS! <laughs> the Borgs have nice haircuts. You know, they have cool gadgets on their face. Wait, They're wait, all the, the, the Borg don't even have haircuts. Nine times out of ten, they're bald headed. I was thinking about the one time when that chick became a bore. Uh, <laughs> Nine of seven. On, uh, oh, seven of six or something like that. Nine yeah, of seven. Yeah, when she became a bore, I, I can't even think of her now. Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. Five of seven. Five of seven. That's her name. Fuck. Okay, so what's your what's your favorite Star Trek series? Honestly. 
it's probably the original series just because of how it was done and supposed to be portrayed. The original series was fucking TV crap. I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying say I, I'm not saying TV wise it was great. I'm talking about the way the story was supposed to progress and shit like that. The next generation was the best Star Trek series. I like Deep Space Nine, but the next generation took you there. It made you believe that we can actually achieve that. Yeah. Whereas the original series just seemed like a campy cartoon show. I'm going to have sex with this green Martian lady. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's it, it's it's funny because a lot of people say that, you know, um, Shatner Kirk was more um, disobedient and broke more uh, uh, laws, uh, Enterprise laws, than Picard. But if you go back and you watch both series, Picard was more reckless and more disobedient than fucking Kirk. Yeah. And and I don't understand what people are fucked up. Even, even fucking real Trekkies. Like, straight up, I love the trucking life. I know the inside out of the Enterprise. Look, like, okay, I great. Can speak dude. Play young, like really, dude. Oh my god, I actually talked to somebody like that one time. That new Klingon. I thought I was going to jump off of a fucking bridge. <laughs> like holy shit! I was like, "Are you kidding me? What the fuck? Like, you took the time to learn a made-up fucking language." I mean, I know all languages are made up, but really, you took the time to fucking... Oh, my God, I don't even know anymore. But you know what? We, <laughs> I, I think we just need to go to break and you just know, fucking Captain reset. Captain Janeway is probably my favorite. She's my favorite captain, though. But let's go to break. Yeah, we need to go to break. So, without further ado, since we had to fuck everything up and do news first, I'm joking, Google. I love you. Uh, tomorrow night is PTS Dog Service Dog Show. He will uh, have guest Dawn from the Service Dog Free Press, as well as Justin Tucker, handler of Roxy the PTSD Service Dog, who also w- is a semifinalist in America's Hero Dog Awards this year. Tune in tomorrow night at 20 hundred, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, July 7th. That's tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm going to have this podcast up between tonight and in the morning, noonish, 1 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. So please tune in for that. It's a great fucking show. I don't want you guys to miss it. And I'll tell you some more about our shows right after this break here on DVRadio.net. You're listening to Barracks Talk. Do you love bacon? Yeah! Do you like guns? Yeah! Mom, I want my cheesy boost. Yeah, god damn it. Do you love America? Hmm. Damn right you do! You crazy bastards that keep freedom ringing need to get over to MyDVStore.com now! This week on the Service Dog Show with PTS Dog, I talk with Don from the Service Dog Free Press, and then I speak with Justin Tucker, handler of Roxy, the PTSD Service Dog, who is a semi-finalist in this year's American Humane Society's Hero Dogs Award. That's the Service Dog Show with PTS Dog, right here on DV Radio, WDVR. We got some fun bread made for you! The music. Let's go! You're listening to WDVR on DVRadio.net. By veterans, for veterans. Simply made for you. Marquee, Marquee, Marquee. Yes, yes. What do you call a mouse with two legs? What do you call a mouse with two legs? You call him Mickey Mouse. Okay. What do you call a duck with two legs? What do you call a duck with two legs? You have to answer this one. This is a half to answer. Oh, uh... A Donald Duck? No, fuckhead. All ducks have two legs. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> you are tuned into Barrick Talk right here on TV Radio. Dot I'm Butterwood. As you heard, we've got Marquis Davis with us tonight. Google and DB6 have skipped out. I believe Recall is in some pain, so we're not going to bother him anymore tonight. Um, yeah, if you're wondering why you don't hear songs in the podcast, it's because we're not able to stream them through our podcast. But what you can do is on 21 at 2100, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Saturday night, Barracks Talk is live on dvradio.net, which means you can hear every song and everything that we play in the show. There's a lot of stuff that you guys don't hear sometimes. You're wondering why? That's why. So tune in to us, Barracks Talk, dvradio.net, every Saturday, 2100, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe, Marquis, you were supposed to have a show this week. I was. It was supposed to be a random show. I've got swamped down with a lot of crap, and I forgot to do one. So I'll do it next week, and the topic that I've chosen will be, how we say it, Mo, Colts. How, how do you spell it, Marquis? C-U-L-T-S, Colts. Okay. See, earlier, Marquis over there struggling, going, I was in a cult, and I'm like, a what? I was in a cult. I was like, what? You were in a cult or a cult? A cult. And I was like, what the it's fuck is cult? I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, you know, it sounds like you're saying yeah. cult. And then I and then I jumped into the Colt 45 two zigzag song for Baby, a second. That's how we, meet. we can go to the park after dog, smoke that tumbleweed. Go ahead, Marquis. I'm sorry. I I, I just but, yep, this. I don't know. <laughs> but people, uh I was in a cult growing up, uh around fifth, sixth grade. My parents got us in a cult. And we'll dive more into that on the Marquee Dirty Thirty next week. And uh, you know, I mean what? I mean, you got a show for me twice, you know, last week and this week. Some people might have missed it. It was a good show, so, you know, suck it up, buttercup. You're such a dick, because I know some people <laughs> in chat right now are fucking bitching at us about your show last week and this week. <laughs> and you and I know why. But do the listeners. <laughs> do the listeners. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was talking about Not Another Military Spouse. The new episode, episode three, did not air Friday at uh, 1907 p.m. as it's supposed to, and that's because my software wanted to kick my ass. It rarely happens like that. I apologize. I did spend about 10 hours yesterday finishing their show as well as the Service Dogs show, so hopefully everything goes smoothly. There is a special airing of Not Another Military Spouse this coming Monday, July 9th at 1900, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just like it would be on Friday, except it's going to be Monday. And then episode four will be Friday of next week. That's July 13th. Friday the 13th. Where the fuck is Jason when you need him, right? Anyway, I uh, just yeah, wanted but, to... You know, that's, that's actually a really good show. Uh, I, che- I checked out the podcast. I liked it. I thought it was just going to be a lot of uh, dependents just saying, well, my husband's an E6, well, mine's an E7. So I'll rank you. You got to let me through this. I got to park here. But it wasn't. It was actually a really good show. They, and, and I really enjoyed it. And they've actually brought that up on the show as how much they fucking hate those kind of fucking spouses. <laughs> and it, it, it yeah. is. It's a wonderful show. Episode three is a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun editing it. I've not had a down moment yet editing these ladies show. I mean, if you get a chance, please listen to it while they're in the chat room this Monday or on a Friday when it's normally airing. If you don't get the chance to hear it when it actually airs, please, please, please listen to the podcast. Also, go check out their Facebook page, Unconventional Vet Spouse. That's that's Unconventional Vet Spouse. It's a fucking mouthful and a half. I think Al does it to fuck with me because I still want to say not another teen movie every time I name their show. But anyway, please go check them out. Give them the, your feedback, what you might want to hear, what kind of guests you might want to hear on their show, stuff like that. Especially if you're a civilian caretaker or a spouse yourself, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. They have male and female spouses as well following their page. I know personally I've got some male and female friends that are following the uh, UCV Facebook page and they fucking love it. So go give them your feedback. But yes, the new episode, episode three, will be airing this coming Monday, July 9th at 1907 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think I beat that into the ground enough. What do you think, Marquis? Hey, Bo, I want to expound on something you said, though. When you said that um, 
you have fun editing their show and putting it together. Trust me, there are shows out there that I have edited, that Bo have edited, where you literally go to sleep. I had one show host when I worked at the station downtown Atlanta that would literally talk like this the entire show. Yeah. He would always, he would make no inflections. It was just this. And he would talk about business. So if you have a business, I'm going to give you a tip on your business today. Today, your business is going to be the best business it can ever be. And that is the most boringest crap in the world. I went to sleep like eight times in the studio trying to edit his show. You know, So when you get a show that is actually exciting, new, fresh, yeah. you know, has good content, you get excited about that in the radio business. Yeah, and the, they, they range, all three women range from a, a, a vet spouse that hasn't had to deal with deployment to one that dealt with it after the fact and one that's dealing with it as it happens. So you get a perspective from all three uh, worlds. And, and like I said, it's just another perspective, a real perspective. They are not your normal try carrot tops and depend upon as as I joke about in the ad and the pro row. And trust me, they are fucking hilarious. I got a message box with them. We joke back and forth all the time. They're about as fucking relentless and savage as any of us. So please check it out. I'm begging you guys. It's you'll have fun. That's all I'll say. <laughs> oh me. You know it's weird not having the news right now and having it early. I think we've only yeah. done that I think we've only done that one other time, maybe twice. Or maybe we should we should do it all the time. Also, sorry, I'm eating French fries because I'm fucking starving for some reason. But um Oh wow. But yeah. Uh, I fucked up earlier before the break. I think I said like five of 90,000 or something, and it's seven of nine. I'm sorry. I fucked up. Me and Marquis were having a moment of Star Trek geekiness. Sorry about that. We're all not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now I am reading the Tabbers Cyclopedic Medical Dictionary because um, I have no content for this part of the show. Well, uh, so I'm just going I'm, to read I'm from glad you, this. No, 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 no. I'm glad you brought up encyclopedias. I mm -hmm. was watching the first ever Bob Barker's Price is Right. Price is Right has been on three, has had three different hosts, just so you all know. And uh, Bob Barker brought it back in 1972. But I was watching the first aired episode. And I've got to say, Marky, it shows how old it is. And one of the things you oh, had wow. to... One of the things you had to price was an encyclopedia. That was the that was the first thing. The second thing, imagine this. You get to buy a station station wagon Vega, a Vega station wagon by Chevy. You guys remember those? Okay. It was like I think it was like seventy five hundred back then. That or no, it was twenty seven hundred. My bad. Twenty seven hundred. That in today's world is almost eight times as much if you go out and buy a brand new car. Eight times as much oh, wow. from 1972 to now. That's 40 some odd years. It's all prices have increased between eight and 15 times since 1972 for the majority of items out there. It's ridiculous. But go wow. ahead with your medical dictionary for those that are curious. Oh, well, if you are curious right now, I am reading about uh, osmolar. Osmolar. To the osmolality of a solution. Osmolar. Spelled. O S M O L A R. I was about to say that sounds like something that has to do with some type of liquid. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting just to thumb through your encyclopedias. Oh my god, everyone should do it. <laughs> Actually, on my tablet, I have about eight different apps for different parts of the body. I've got organs and skull and skeleton and brain and now why would you have that? Well, I love the anatomy. Uh, I actually have a certificate in biology. Um, oh my God, what is it called? Fuck. Biola. I gotta look it up because I can't remember it. I have a fucking um, um, what's it called? Certificate in biology certificate. and behavior. Yeah, biology and behavior in psychology because I love how the human psyche works and I've always been fascinated about. It. But yeah, that's one main reason I have those things is I just learn about the human anatomy. Finger spelling, a method of communication used by persons with hearing or visual impairment in which words are spelled out letter by letter rather than depicted with single signs. As in American Sign Language, finger spelling can be done visually as seen 
as well as that word is in even English. All right. So, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Huh. I'm not gonna mispronounce the other word on the internet, and then you're gonna have it be go viral. <laughs> yeah, that that would be our luck. This fucking podcast goes fucking viral. Of all <laughs> no. the fucking, of all the fucking podcasts, the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> that would. Kill oh my me. goodness! Also, for TV you guys, is, oh, I, I was just gonna say, yeah, I'm eating French fries still. For those of you wondering about the next contraband episode. It should be coming out uh, July 21st. Hopefully, if nothing goes wrong, the latest that will be July 28th. We're trying to get some things finished. Um, I need to finish editing it, of course. But July 21st at the earliest, the 28th at the latest, for those of you who are curious. I'm not going to tell you the guest's name until I know it's going to happen. So <laughs> We have the shows. We have like a shit ton of shows. I just have to get them edited and some other things ironed out before I can actually tell you what's going to happen in said shows, so... Oh, my God. <laughs> Moist. Dead. Comma. Wet. Moist. You sound like the guy from uh, Password. <laughs> you remember that? Yep. I actually Today, love Password. Today's word is... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Neocortex. <laughs> Neocortex. Can you imagine that guy saying, today's word is neocortex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, there's some pretty awesome pictures in this thing, too. Uh, that I hope you have lotion and Kleenex after tonight. I got lotion, all the Kleenex. <laughs> Use the toilet oh paper. Oh, my goodness, man. Libido. The sexual drive, conscious or unconscious. In psychoanalysts, the energy that is driving force of human behavior. It you has know, been variously identified as the sex urge, desire to live, desire for pleasure or satisfaction. Libido. I've never understood why we call it libido. It's probably some Greek word. Even still. Oh, that's just Latin. It's Latin for desire. 99% of our words do derive from Latin, so. Yeah. It's funny, too, because English is the derivative of uh, German. You know that, right? What's that again? English is like a derivative of German. Yes. But most of our words have Latin origins. It's so weird. I hate language. We should all just walk around and talk with clicks and clacks. <laughs> There's a country and this that is where still your does show that. Has went to. Dude, I told you I was tired. <laughs> there's, there's still a country that talks like that. Yeah, I know. You know, uh, I think it's in somewhere in Africa. Well, shit, everything's in somewhere in Africa. It's somewhere in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in Africa. My dog just answered you, didn't you? See, he keeps yeah. answering. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, but on a serious note, people, today I helped out a couple of veterans, homeless veterans, get their uh, e-benefits set up and uh, some of their claims starting to get processed and things of that nature. And I want you guys to do that, man. If you see someone on the street that's had a sign that says, I'm a homeless vet, pull them to the side because apparently, even though you guys may be DVs or dysfunctional veterans, you know how to go through the claims process. These people who are homeless may not because they have not even heard of it before. I ran into a Navy veteran today in a, a little uh, Philly cheese take place, and he was saying that um, he didn't file any VA claims. The only thing he's ever used with the VA was his VA home loan. And I said, God, why in the world did you not have a claim form submitted? Did you ever go to sick call? He said, like, yeah, I went to sick call. I said, so why didn't you go to the VA and file a claim? This is a guy who has his, his daughter was there and his wife. Was there. He had a nice uh, Cadillac car, you know, the 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 the. the the SUV Cadillac. And the I'm Escalade. like, you never filed a claim. You know? He's doing wow. a disservice to himself. Yeah. And that's what I've always been told. You're doing a disservice to yourself if you do not file a VA claim and you fought, you know, uh, 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 valiantly for this country, whether it was during a time of war or not. You still serve and you have the right to go to the VA and get your claim filed so that you don't have to come out of pocket to get your knee replaced. 
or to get a disc re, uh, realigned. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it, Bo. If you never would have filed a VA claim, right, even if they did make you, you I'd would never dead. have your Crohn's disease looked at at all, would you? I'd be dead. Yep, yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, I'm not even so, joking or exaggerating. I would be literally dead right now. I would have been dead in 2010, September of. So, like, so don't, don't do this to your community, people. Go out to your community. And if you know of a guy who hasn't filed his claims, help him. Help each other. Like DV6 has always said, how other organizations is always trying to attack DV and beat us up and eat us up, but we don't do that to them. It's simply because we understand what the code of the brotherhood of being a military veteran is. Yeah. All right, and that code is having your brother six. What they always have, you all see the people with the tattoos with the with the semicolon IGY six. Well, do you really have your brother six if you're not helping him get his VA uh uh uh, uh in, in insurance and his VA claims done? Are you really, do you really have somebody six? No, you don't. You're just looking out for yourself. Marquee, You're not looking out for your brother, what you claim to do. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bo. Do you love your father? <laughs> <laughs> he showed that to, oh. uh, he, he, he showed that to Nevermore and all of them when they were up there. Oh, that's just, <sighs> that, that breaks the ice for everybody. Do you love your father? <laughs> I just met my father for the first time about, uh, you know, a couple months ago. <laughs> Marquis, Marquis, that's wonderful because you met your father. I finally caught back up with my sister after 20 some odd years. Like, like, isn't it great? You was telling me it is great, man. I got siblings that I never met before. So I'm planning a trip to go down there and see them. And, you know, they got kids and stuff. So I just want to get to know my entire complete family and not just one half of it right yeah i've I've got a younger brother that uh lives out uh well west of me that's all i'll say i don't want you guys going and trying to find my younger brother um and i've probably got other brothers and sisters because i had a sperm donor basically for a father so yeah (laughs) you know what's funny about my father though is that he never knew about me at all my mother got pregnant by him when she was there for the summer didn't know she was pregnant, went back home and told her longtime boyfriend that I, that he was my father, right? And, uh, my dad never, ever knew that I existed. Right. So, you know what? I can't fault him. I can't get mad at him. And that's the thing. My wife, I was so angry, dude. I was bitter. I was like, you know, when I first saw him, I was like, why had, did you never call me? Why did you never take care of me? I stayed in hotels and motels and you never did anything for me. My wife was like, no, you have to understand he knew nothing about you. How can he help you if he didn't know? Yeah. So I had to let that go. See, and I was afraid for a, a few various reasons that my sister would be upset with me because, you know, you don't know what someone else's parents have told them about their siblings or whatever. But, you know, we, we talked for God a long time that morning and she was just happy that she, her and I are finally able to see each other. And she loves like an hour and some change away. And it's like, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. I know. I know. Don't cry on the air, Bo. Don't Shut up. I will, I will, I will Joe Osteen you. <laughs> I will. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Let me tell you what. Dude. Those fries were fucking off the chain, mother. Yeah, she's giving me thumbs up and everything. There's a pack of ketchup that I didn't get to use because there wasn't enough fries, but love you. Where did you get yeah. the fries from? Did she make the fries? Did you get the fries from Crystals? I think these are the frozen fries. I'll, I'll tell you later because I don't feel like asking her while we're oh, still. Okay. Yeah, we yeah, still got man. five minutes. There- Fry the fries are delicious. It, it, excuse me. Excuse me, Marquis. She heard me talking. They are Nathan's famous jumbo crinkle cut French fries. They look oh, like they're. Yes. It looks like something for Christmas. I'm not even joking. It looks like. Those are really good. It looks like a fucking Christmas cookie bag. That's what it looks like. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? I'm a... Yep. All right. Uh, well. You've never had a Nathan's famous hot dog? Yeah. Dude, you know Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs just had their annual hot dog eating contest where it was some controversy that was involved, okay? So yeah, I heard the that. current record holder, 
The current record for the most hot dogs eating within that span of time, I think it's like 10 minutes, is like 73 hot dogs, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the guy, the record holder, broke his own record for 74 hot dogs, but the counters at the event only counted 64 hot dogs, and they counted the second place person to have only 43 hot dogs. Right. But when they went and recounted, he actually had 74 hot dogs, and the second place contender actually had 64 hot dogs. Yeah, I seen that. I was like, holy shit. It was in the world of hot dog eating. <laughs> Controversy arises. Dwayne like, Rock Johnson stars in Hot Dog Day. <laughs> like it's, because The Rock is in every single freaking movie nowadays for some reason. I'm so tired of it, man. I wish, <laughs> I wish, I wish that the next movie that came out with him would go back to the Doom days. When he's on there for five minutes and, oh, no, an alien eats your face. You're dead. Ha <laughs> ha. Or, or that he gets CGI'd so horribly that everybody's like, this movie sucks. Fuck. Well, they did that the Scorpion. Johnson. The Scorpion 2, they did that to him. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. He looked so, like, it looked like a PS2 game, ba or PS1 game, I should say. I was like, <laughs> oh, holy shit. Like, we've got all this money and technology for movies, and yet you're going to use a PS1 engine for a fucking blockbuster hit? Oh, my God. <laughs> the Rock is in everything, people. He is in everything. And you know what's funny? If he ran for president, he might win. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of that constant exposure. Everybody knows The Rock. The Rock does nothing wrong. There's no controversy with The Rock. The Rock is amazing. So that's why America loves The Rock. When The Rock's with Kevin Hart, we laugh. When The Rock's with, uh, who's that guy? I can't remember his name right now. School of Rock guy. School of Rock. Tom Cruise? School no, Jack Rock. Black. School Jack Rock. I, I was thinking of, uh, the other one that Tom Cruise was in, uh, History of Rock. But, uh, yeah, uh, Jack Black. Yeah. When The Rock is with Jack Black, we laugh and we smile. When The Rock is with a monkey, a great big monkey in Rampage, we get excited because it's an action movie. When The Rock does the same exact movie with a building that's burning down, we get excited. <laughs> but oh, before, I'm so tired of The Rock. Before and he's we, my favorite wrestler of all time. Before we end the show, I've got to say Rampage was on Nintendo 64. It was a platform video game where you could choose from a gorilla, a rat, uh, yeah, a fucking crocodile, a lizard. Or something, uh, and a lizard. Yeah. That's where fucking Rampage comes from, motherfuckers. All right? So go do your fucking homework. Anyway, go follow us on Dysfunctional Veterans and DB Radio Facebook and YouTube. That's what you'll find us under is Dysfunctional Veterans and DB Radio. Follow us on Twitter at DB underscore DB Radio. Recoil is not here, so I'm just going to tell you, go sign up on DBBarracks.com right now. It's a free form. It's full of hilarious, awesome shit. You can talk to your brothers, sisters, battle buddies, whatever. You can do it all anonymously. Complete anonymity. Right there at dbbarracks.com. Go to mydbstore.com. I'm sure they got some new cool shit for you guys to get. I think they've got a 10% discount also. If uh, you want to go on Dysfunctional Veterans Facebook page and find that promo code, please do that to get that 10%. Marquis, do you have anything for our listeners tonight? Nope. Don't follow them on anything. Just have a good night. Yeah, so for DB6, Google Recoil, who are not here, I'm Boner with that's Marquis Davis. You just heard Barrick Talk right here on WDBR DB Radio Network. Yes, the DB Radio Network at dbradio.net. Go find us on iTunes, Podbean, all that cool shit. Anyway, we got to go, motherfuckers. It's Saturday, July 7th, 2018. Are, are you going to say anything, Marquis? No, no, no. No, All right. No, no. Un until next week, fuck sickles. Bye bye. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter.